Haunted the Movie on NBC. Alvarado, passing six. <laughs> and you wonder why I call you jumpy. I can't sit still in this hood, Hunter. You spotted as a foreign object. You're kicking back having your latte, and I'm out here among the natives. And that butt hanging out. What are they? Lattes? Hey, jumpy, don't let anybody out there hear you say that. You get your butt capped this year. Tonight I'm gonna tell Maria. How you rode my hide like Zorro. Damn, it's hot out here. Really? Well, I got the air conditioner on in here. You got a mean streak in you, Hunter. You know that? Got our boy. He's heading toward La Doña. Good enough spot. He's wearing a blue jacket, jeans, a pair of high top Jordans. No doubt dress for action. Let me know when you get in position, Jumpy. Be careful. This is Tony's third bounce. You got it. We can handle this gangaloon. Get to Starbucks before a noon rush. <laughs> Hunter, I can't get any closer. I gotta wait till he comes outside. All right. Make sure he's got the dope, otherwise we've wasted six weeks. I know, buddy, I know. He's on the move. He's got it under his jacket. He's got it. I'm with him. No, no, Jumpy. Let me call backup first. <laughs> no time for backup. He's got it. Let's go, Chuck. Chuck. Stop! Chuck. LAPD! This is L-22. Request backup at Alvarado between 7th and 8th. Suspect presumed armed and dangerous. L-22 out. I think you're chasing, Holmes. I'm a police officer, and shooting you is just one more thing I'm gonna have to do today. 
So beat it. Los Angeles police officer. You are under arrest. After we ascertained that the drugs have been purchased, I ordered Detective Lopez to follow Tony Velez. From the records, we see you did radio for backup. Yes, I did. And you feel Detective Lopez followed your orders? Yes. The report also states Detective Lopez went off wire. When did this happen? After I called in for backup. Detective Lopez was not wearing a vest. Did you know that? We were undercover. That was his choice. And Detective Lopez was your partner for the last four and a half years? Yes, he was. Were you aware that both of the victims were illegal aliens? Yes. They had both been deported three times. Lieutenant Hunter, you've been involved in seven shootings in the past three years. Did the nationality or background of the suspects you felt were a threat influence your judgment? My judgment was influenced by the weapons in their hands and having witnessed the shooting death of my partner. So you feel the death of Detective Lopez lies fully with the suspects Antonio Velez and Ramon Avila? I was the officer in command. Detective Lopez was killed on my watch. I take full responsibility for his death. Lieutenant Hunter, you are temporarily relieved of active duty pending the findings of this review board. Chuck Lopez made a mistake and got himself killed. Just don't let this eat you up inside. Just a second. What do you mean? Let what eat me up inside? 
that no one seems outraged anymore, that the cry for decency in this stinking town is dead, and people like me, cops like me, are the criminals in officer-involved shootings? You've been through it before. You know how it is, right? Oh, I know how it is. I also know how it used to be. Lieutenant Hunter, you are temporarily relieved of active duty pending the findings of the review board. San Diego's Union Station. Thank you for using Amtrak.
Hello. Hey, this is your wake-up call. Welcome to San Diego. It's 82 degrees and sunny. Who is this? You know who this is. What are you doing? Get over here. What am I doing? Let's see. Uh, having my back waxed. What do you think I'm doing? I'm getting dressed. Well, hurry up. Get your pants on, will you? It's going to be a great day, and I can't wait to see you. I can't wait for you to meet my fiancé. Oh. Well, tell him not to worry. I'm bringing the potato salad and the fork. <laughs> Listen, do you have directions? Do you know how to get here? Directions? I thought you were sending me a limousine. Can't you people afford a limousine? What kind of engagement party is this, anyway? Neither Roger nor I will be offended if you show up in a cab. So just get your butt in one and get over here. All right. I'll see you soon. so kind. All right, everybody, it's that time. Can I get your attention, please? Bobby, Tom, come on, get up here. All right. Now, I'd like to start by saying that I've known Roger for, oh, way too long. <laughs> and I know that when it comes to business ventures and cars, wine, his taste has always been impeccable but well below standard when it came to women. <laughs> until now. I'm sorry, Needy. Until now. Until now. I just want to say, old friend, that I always thought you were the man who had everything. And now, I know you are. As the future mayor of San Diego, he's proven to his constituents yeah, that he knows... I want you to know is, is that as my campaign manager, he's not implying that my decision to marry this beautiful lady here has anything to do with looking good for the public. Heaven, I would never, ever say that. And I want to make a toast to all of you here. Thank you so very much for joining us on this wonderful occasion. And here's to victory and love. Victory and love! <laughs> Thanks again. Enjoy. Honey, I'll be right back, okay? Sure. I see an old friend. Okay, no problem. Hey, 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 where's our first lady going? I want to introduce her to Congressman O'Neill and his wife. I think Dee's going to be occupied for a while, though. She's got some catching up to do with an old friend. Who's that guy? That's her ex-partner from LAPD. It's Lieutenant Rick Hunter. Oh, right, right. She mentioned him. Yeah. That is what I was going to get you for Christmas. Oh, thanks a lot. That'll go great with my Murphy bag. You do not still have that Murphy bed. You remember the Murphy bed, do you? <laughs> yes, I remember it. I was hoping perhaps you had evolved some since then, though. I mean, look at you today. Your socks match and everything. Well, like you, I can live anywhere. By the way, this place reminds me of your old two-bedroom on 4th Street. Oh, are we feeling just a little bit jealous? Jealous of what? Having to drop breadcrumbs in the middle of the night to find my way back in the bathroom? <laughs> you are so asking for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I am so looking forward to having you meet Roger. It might not be as easy as I want it to be today, though. I mean, with the campaign going on and everything, you know? Campaign? I thought this was an engagement party. Oh, don't be such a Weisenheimer, huh? You and I have done plenty of politicking in our day under the guise of something else. Did I tell you that's how Roger and I met? Yep, about ten times. No, I think it was more like eight times. Ten times. <laughs> there was... Such little funding for foster care and finding permanent homes for the kids was so hard. And all of a sudden, thanks again. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, not for me. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? Hey. You having fun? Yeah. Good. You look beautiful. 
excuse me, Alderman. I wanted to thank you and Anne both. Thank you so much. So kind of you. Well, hello. Oh, hello. Looking for the little boys' room? Yes, I am. It's right down there and around to your left. It's a little tricky. I can show you so you won't get lost. Really? Well, I think I can manage. Thanks very much. You're very kind. I have a pocket full of breadcrumbs. No, because I'm not interested in what you have to say about this. It's just, it's not, it's not going to... Rick! No, I'm going to have to call you back. Yes, yeah. No, bye-bye. No. My apologies. Not a word to Dee. She would kill me if she knew that I slipped away to do some work. Now, no problem. Didn't mean to intrude. You looked intense. No, I just... I just wanted a chance to, to tell you how glad I am that you could make it down. They really wanted you here. She thinks the world of you. And I want you to know that she means everything to me. I'm the luckiest man on this planet. Indeed you are. <laughs> I've been blessed in many ways. The day I found Dee, it didn't get any better than that.
Thanks a lot. Sorry, sir, this is a crime scene. What's your business? Lieutenant Hunter, LAPD. A friend of Didi McCall's. I was here yesterday at the party. Minetti? Yeah, go ahead. This is Mueller? All right. I got Lieutenant Hunter coming down. Yeah, send him in. Yeah, thanks a lot. Who's the detective in charge? Uh, detective Carson and Detective Gillette. Thank you. Sir, thanks, Lieutenant. I don't even remember firing back. But you do remember getting the gun from Sergeant McCall's closet, don't you, Mr. Prescott? Of course I do. I, I told you. Detective Terrence Gillette. Detective? I'm Lieutenant Hunter, LAPD. I'm a friend of D.D. She called me this morning. What happened? Well, apparently Mr. Prescott uh, interrupted a home invasion in progress. Hmm. The doors weren't jammed. The locks and door jam don't look tampered with. So maybe I left them open. I don't know. I was having a party. You know, there were people coming in and out all day. But you don't remember leaving them open. Did you leave your safe open? No, of course not. You had a pistol with you when you came down the stairs. You trained with a gun? It was my gun, Detective. It's Dee's gun. I went upstairs, I got it out of her closet when I saw the guy sneaking around the house. And the intruder opened fire on you, and you fired back wildly, hitting and killing the intruder. You know, I, I, I didn't even know that he was dead until Dee told me. How many rounds were fired? All six uh, from Mr. Prescott, three from the intruder. Seems pretty shaken up. Yeah, apparently. You know, he's never shot anyone before, let alone been shot at. Mm. Any ID on the DB? Yeah, the uh, the wallet I did him is a William Kohler from Escondido. He's carrying a wallet? Yeah, <laughs> probably an alias. We'll check on it. Okay, listen. I don't wish to intrude. Thanks for your time. Good luck on the case. If you need me, I'm staying over at the Crystal Pier. Oh, Crystal Pier? Yeah. Great. Did he tell us a lot about you? Oh, well. This, you know, the whole, the house was filled with people all, all, all day. Uh, every, every, the door was open, people, 125 people were in there. All day. Hey. Oh. You all right? This is unbelievable. I'm okay. All right. Roger's not. He killed somebody, for God's sake. He got your gun and went downstairs with it? Yeah. Well, look, Detective Gillette seems like he's pretty sharp. Yeah, he is. So it's Detective Carson and, and uh, Captain Gallardo. They're all good people. They're good. I'll make it back to Roger, okay? Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, okay. I'll call you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. How do I know? I, I had 125 people here. Okay. Right? I, you know what? I think we have enough. I, uh, I, I give you cooperation. We'll be in touch. Let's just get a little of that blood right down there. Thank you. Bob! I should have killed him long ago. Nah. One of us should have. And you think you can handle him, huh? Make no mistake. He has some weaknesses, but he's not without cunning. 
It was your idea to bargain with him, to play this game. And what would you do? Just kill him, eh? Well, at least Kolya would still be alive. You think I care about Kolya? None of us matter more than that list. Then what do we do now? Something out there very important to him. I'll find out what it is. Hey, Lieutenant, how you doing? Well, we're pushing ahead here. Sorry about Jumpy, man. We're gonna miss him. How's Maria holding up? Well, she took the kids and went up to Washington to see her parents. Jeez, I never had that happen to me before. Lucky, I guess. It's good to be lucky sometimes, you know. Look, Alan, why don't you do something for me? Why you put a name into the computer? Well, you got it. Lay it on me. All right, the name is William Kohler. K-O-E-H-L-E-R. Now, I have an open homicide file up there, the Esposito murder. Yeah, I know it. Good. I want you to put Kohler's name into the Esposito murder file. So when someone cross-references Kohler's name, my name pops up. You understand that? Got it. What's Kohler got to do with the Esposito murder? Nothing. Okay. When you need it. Before you eat the next donut, my friend. <laughs> You're harsh, man. You're harsh. Consider it done. Thanks. Oh, Alan. Yeah. You never got this phone call, I understand. Got it. Detective, I think you should take a look at this. Good. Give me two copies of that, okay? No problem. Thanks for coming in. Well, you're welcome, Captain Dwyer. As you can see, we ran the dead perp William Kohler through the system, and it kicked back that he's connected with an unsolved homicide in Los Angeles. One that you're working? Yeah, the Esposito case. Strange double homicide. The name Kohler rang a bell when you mentioned it to me. We're all on the same side here, Lieutenant. If we can help you out, we will. This is a very high-profile case. Oh, I understand. I'll, I'll stay out of your way. I'll work my side of the street. That's not necessary. Your reputation is legend. You'll work with Detective Gillette here, if that's okay. Well, thank you. I look forward to that. Oh, it's great, yeah. And that was uh, really short police work, finding the blood on the driveway, Lieutenant. Yeah, we're running a match on it now. Oh, good. I don't think it'll match Kohler's, though. What's that? Well, not unless he got shot in the house and dragged himself out to the driveway to bleed, then crawled back inside the house to die. Yeah. Think there were two perps? Well, it looks that way. Mr. Prescott only reported seeing one intruder. And that's possible, but I think it's a lead worth looking at. I agree. Yeah. What'd you find on the DB? William Kohler came up clean, not even a parking citation. Parents live out in Escondido, nice, sweet people, very distraught. Seems strange, doesn't it? Not even a traffic citation or a wild party in his background. I thought the same thing. I mean, how often does a perp not have a prince on file? Well, maybe he's not a U.S. citizen. Uh, send uh, Kohler's prince to international. Oh, yeah. You think I could talk to Colter's parents? Well, uh, Carson and I went out there this morning. They really don't seem to know anything. Well, let's 
Give it a shot. Oh, uh, Captain Gallardo. Uh, what do you think of Roger Prescott? Well, he's certainly been an upstanding member of our community. He runs a very successful pharmaceutical company, and I think he's going to parlay his uh, charm into getting elected mayor. You going to vote for him? Well, I'm smearing McCall. It's pretty police friendly. Oh. You going to vote for him? We all know and love Dee Dee down here. She came down to Juvenile. She made a huge positive impact. Marrying her should buy Prescott a lot of support from the department. Yeah, and a lot of votes. Sid! Dee Dee! How you doing? Good. Louise, get in my office, sit there, do not move, don't touch anything, do not speak. Dee Dee, this guy, he's, uh, he, I'm gonna have to... I, I, I know, do me a favor, though. Let yeah. me talk to him before you write the report up, okay? And by the way, your piano playing was fantastic at the party. You're embarrassing me, Dee. Still got it, Sid. Thanks. But next time? Got it. I'm meeting Bert at the house in an hour, and I'd love for you to join us. Oh, I just I want your input on any decisions he makes regarding the campaign. Okay, I'll be there. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mishka, your English is so good. You're always so talented that way. Could become anybody. Should have killed you long ago. You tried. So what are you saying? This makes us even? You and I'll never be even. You were always too emotional, always. I mean, a smart businessman would have given me what we negotiated for and gone on with his life. The way you did with Americans at that time. You know, selling out your own country so you could come here and make lots of money. <laughs> become a mayor of a Munchkin village. If you had a real fire, you'd be running for a president. Mishka. Mishka, Mishka, Mishka. First I'm going to kill you. And then I'm going to take that pretty lady of yours and show her what I used to do when I was a commandant of the KGB. When you and I were comrades. Hmm? So she will beg me too to kill her, but I won't. For a long time. You must go ahead and kill me. Because then you'll get no list. No Mishka. No list. Well, but remember, without uh, Vladimir Koshko, there is no Mishka, just... Uh, Roger Prescott. But there are photographs, documents, fingerprints. I think you'll get me the list. Just then without any surprises, huh? I was expecting you alone. I saw two people. I didn't know. Stop. 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 I'm not angry because you were trying to kill me. I would have done the same. You had your chance. But you didn't have the stump. I saw the look on your face when you should call you. I saw your weakness. I was hurt. You could have keep coming after me and finished me. Hmm. I would have done the same. right there, the sofa with a flowered print. 
coffee table with the family photos. This woman came in with this sweet mother with, with coffee and oatmeal cookies. I, Don't touch anything, Terry. There's nothing to touch. No. So what do you think? Something's wrong? I think something stinks. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, let's get forensics down here. Dust everything. Why can't you have a man of action as a leader? Used to work when there were war heroes, when the country was allowed to have war heroes. You defended your home and, and your loved yeah, ones. I just want to make sure that what we put out there is what I believe in and not just another spin on this particular situation. Roger, your constituents are not looking for the next marshal of Dodge City. However, they do understand self-defense. This is a conservative town and a military town. A man's home or... A person's home is sacrosanct. Everyone believes that, and that'll play. Our friends know us. This will not affect anything. Honey, all you have to do is tell the truth. Bert, I think you contact the press, ASAP, and let Roger make a statement. Absolutely. Listen, you defended your home and your loved one. The country's going to like this story. I actually think this can work for us. And Dee Dee's right. The two of you have a very strong base here in San Diego. And as far as gun control is concerned, the issue hasn't even come up. So it, it's not like we're going to be stepping on our own tongues. I, I, I think it's in bad form. I feel, I feel numb. Sweetheart, it's different for you. You're a police officer. You're used to life and death. Roger, you never get used to taking a life, no matter who you are. you get to work with Hunter. Keep telling him, be the right place the right time. McCall used to tell some, some bodacious stories about the way he would work a case. Yeah. Yo, guys, guys, you are not going to believe the hit you got off the prince at the Cola House. Bingo. Lieutenant Hunter, I'm Bert Gold, Roger's campaign manager. I remember. This is Detective Gillette. So you're here to uh, see Roger. Maybe I should stay. No, this is official police business. You can talk to him later. Good to see you again, Bert. This way, gentlemen. Hey. Hey. Well, actually, this case is connected to one I'm working on in Los Angeles. Really? Yep. Yeah, we just need to ask Mr. Prescott a few questions. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Hi, Roger. May I offer you a drink? No, thanks. So, what's this about? William Kohler. What about William Kohler? Well, there is no William Kohler. It seems the guy you shot dead was connected to a Vladimir Koskov. Who's that? He was known as the Butcher of St. Petersburg. He was a KGB officer. Koskov and Kohler knew each other. We think Kohler was part of Koskov's crew of Russian Mafia. Russian Mafia? Yeah. Well, just because Kohler or whatever his name is knew this Koskov doesn't mean anything. Well, not necessarily. Uh, you see, we think Koskov was here and Roger may have shot him. Lieutenant Hunter found blood in the driveway. It didn't belong to Kohler. Now, you're sure you only saw one burglar that night, right, Mr. Prescott? Yes. Hey, Roger runs a pharmaceutical company. I mean, for God's sakes, even trained police officers don't register every detail under fire, and you know that. Besides, it was dark. This, this is a bit bizarre here. You know, you're, you're talking about the Russian Mafia, the KGB, two intruders. I saw one man, and I shot him. And unfortunately, he's dead. Believe me, it's bizarre to us also. You, you don't know Vladimir Koskov. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Prescott. We'll be in touch. You bet. Thanks a lot, Roger. Bye. I better call Bert. Bring him up to speed.
former Soviet operative cage. Living in Belize where Vladimir Koskov butchers. Koskov with numerous murders with... Whatever it is you're on, I want some. Ramin, I lost track of time. Come in, sit down. Thank you, officer. Okay. You know, the last time you were here, I seem to recall we had a conversation where I told you I did not want you back in my office again. I don't want you to see me in here either. Tell the cops to stop bothering me. Yeah, well, this isn't about the cops. This is about the fact that you broke into your parents' home and you stole the DVD player. Don't you understand what can happen to you? Sure. I could get shot. Your old man kept a burglar the other night. Isn't that what I heard? Tell me what you know. About what? You know what about? When I left the house, Roger was staring out the window. Bird is trying to salvage a campaign. Things are spiraling out of control. Everything's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. Okay, relax. Just for a second. Look, Roger's in a jackpot, that's for sure. Something's going on and he knows it. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Oh, you bet. All right, look, no matter how you cut this, the facts still hold. There was a break-in. The perp had a weapon. Two perps. All right, two perps. Now, Kohler's weapon definitely fired three times, and the placement of the bullet entries corroborates Roger's story. I'm not saying that's not what happened. Damn it, Hunter! Look, there were two intruders, both Russian. One, a KGB killer. That's who breaks into your house? The safe was open. You know how long it takes to crack a safe. Roger admitted... He heard the noise and came right downstairs. There was no time to open a safe. So what are you saying? Well, maybe the safe was already open. Are you implying that Roger left the safe open so that he could shoot a burglar? You sit around a long time waiting for that to happen. Unless they were invited. You know me. I don't fall in love easily. When I do, it's the real deal. You all right? Yeah. 
Someone call 911 for him. Oh, I do not miss this. Officer Keys? Yes, Lieutenant. Let me know when you head back to the station, will you? You got it, sir. Are you all right, Sarge? Yeah. Are you sure you don't need to see a paramedic? No, I'm fine, Cindy. Thank you, though. Okay, thanks. You okay? Yeah. What the hell is going on here, Hunter? Well, maybe you should tell her. We need to talk. Roger. Why did you bring me here? Adam and Sarah Prescott. What do your parents have to do with this? Well, their real names were Mikhail and Ola Savaransky. Prescott is the name that was supplied by the CIA. And since their son was a traitor to the communist regime of Russia, they were on Vladimir Koskov's list. You sound like you know a lot about him. I should. I'm from St. Petersburg. I take it you don't mean Florida. My name is Mayushka Savaransky. I was captain of intelligence for the KGB. Now, don't misunderstand me. We were not Nazi stormtroopers. The KGB is like your CIA. It's an intelligence division that was used to, to defend our country against threat. And when the communist government fell, some diehard fanatics tried to rally. And they targeted many good, loyal Russian people. People who believed that communism was strangling our country. And in exchange for certain information, your CIA agreed to help me to bring these people to freedom in America, including my parents. You were a double agent for the United States? Yes, I became one. And no matter how you cut it, I became a traitor. Then you were one of the people that was targeted by the hardcore group that was trying to maintain communist control. We preserved a lot of worthwhile lives. Lives that went on to, to do many good things, many doctors and scientists. <sighs> that worked for your company? Yes, yeah, some of them. But we are all Americans in spirit and in, in allegiance. These families have, have children that know nothing about this. Nor should they or will they. Unless a Coast Coast shows up. He wants a list of every name and location of the people that escaped. He still wants to kill them? Some blackmail the others for his own self-interest. But he'll kill everyone who stands in his way. Now, what I did... Roger, whether I believe that what you did was justified, I still believe that I was engaged to Roger Prescott of Steubenville, Ohio. And for all intents and purposes, you, you still are? For all intents and... Did you invite Koskoff into our home that night? He wanted the list. I told him it was in the safe. I told him that I would leave the French doors and the safe open. There was no list in the safe. You never intended to give him that list? No. I intended to kill him. Because I didn't intend to just sit back and allow Vladimir Koskov to destroy innocent people's lives. 
You don't understand how many people he has killed. You don't understand who you're dealing with here. He'll phone me again tonight. Just set up another meeting. It's reversed its editorial support of mayoral candidate Roger Prescott, as has the other leading paper, The Tribune. Not surprisingly, the most recent polls show a decline in Prescott's popularity, while his leading contender, Arthur Klein, has come from behind as the odds-on favorite among San Diego voters. This unprecedented. And Call the cops? Yeah, do that. It's just about done. Suddenly you find yourself back at work. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that. My apologies. Your visit has come with a hook in it. You don't have to apologize to me, Roger. Sometimes things just don't go according to plan. I was
sorry to hear about your partner. Yeah, Chuck Lopez. Good man. Family man, good cop. Made one mistake, one... One slip cost him his life. yourself responsible yes he does Roger we're at war each one of us is at war every day one way or another unfortunately there are people out there who don't know what it is we do as police officers We help people. Is that right? Yeah, sometimes. And does that seem to be enough for you? Well, when it's the right sometimes. Let's get two police officers over here to watch McCall. Meet you both back at the station. You got it. Roger. Goodbye. This is it. We'll not get another chance. Once we get the list, we're gone. Unless we are dead. You did say that Mishka was gunning, I believe was the word. Indeed he is. That's why I do the thinking and you do what I say. Push Lee.
Prescott's here. Remember, he's unarmed. Wait for me to say go. Got stood up? No, no, he'll be here. Just relax. Just wait for me. Remember, officers Minetti and Cochran are on this property. Let's find them. Search the house. Take her out of here. Hello. Is this the cop? Hunter? Yes, it is. Hmm. Thank Mishka for doing exactly what I thought he'd do. I hope you will not cross me again. Look, don't hurt her. You'll get your list. No, no, no. No. You'll be a nice cop and... Give me Mishka on the phone. Vladimir, if you touch her... You disappoint me again. And I'll marry her back over the next ten weeks, one piece at a time. No. Listen carefully. Type. You have that, um, can I get this because that's, um, defiance in your eyes. Strong woman you are, right? It doesn't take much to be strong compared to Mishka. I mean, you're Roger Prescott. 
He always led with his heart. Risking everything we were, everything we believed in and fought for. To protect the lives of other weaklings like himself. Well, not everyone can be strong like you, Koska. Definitely Mishka's woman. Vladimir! Enough of your game! Let's finish our business! Vladimir, your fiancé has come to rescue you. His heart. And still his weak spot. Let's go. Vladimir! Yes, indeed. Let's finish our business. The list. Open it. Read. Uh, Andrew Peters. Cleveland. Colin Walter. Jeff. Jeff. You got your list. Now you let her go.
humanitarian contributions and his desire to make this world a better place. God bless Roger Prescott. May he rest in peace. When you're heading back up on things, Oh, I'll probably leave in a couple of days. Don't be a stranger. I won't be. Thanks. Bye. Officer Riley, LAPD. I'm calling on behalf of Captain Toller. He sent you the following message, quote, good news from the shooting review board, unquote. Also, the department received a request for transfer from Captain Gallardo from San Diego Police Department. The captain was wondering about that, not quite sure what it means, so please call him ASAP at 555-1883. Thank you, Lieutenant. To save, press 9. To delete this message, press 7. Thank you. 